Alright, so we're about to meet Yal Metellus. There's a couple of things you should know about him, if you want to make a good impression. First, he was the first one here. Well, he was here before the rest of us anyway. So the Citadel is his, and where are all his guests? Second, he's very protective of this place, and won't tolerate anyone disturbing the peace. So be on your best behaviour, and you should be fine. This is the top of the Citadel. The bathhouse is off limits, and I'm not even sure what's behind the gold door. Only the Yarl has ever gone in there. You're on your own from here. I've got lazy farmers to supervise. Good luck with the Yarl, and I'll see you around. The Jarl is waiting for you on his balcony, on your left. What? Did you say something to me? No use talking to me, young un. Can't hear a word you're saying. Both me ears went years ago. Still got my one good eye, though. All I need. Used to be a vigilant of Stender till I slipped up. You take it from me, you ever find yourself toe to toe with the flame at Renoc. You make sure you put some distance between you for you kill it. Otherwise, whoosh! Eyes, ears, still can't hear ya. There's a face I don't recognize. Welcome to my city. I'm Jarl Metellus. Tell me, it's always exciting to meet a new member of our small community. Now, before I forget, since you're here for good, you'll need some quarters. Here's a key to the last vacant chambers down in the city, between Brawl and Luki. It's all yours. Now tell me, what brings you to my city? I sent you here. I... I'm not sure what you mean. Well, let's see. This is my handwriting. The victims of an unspeakable atrocity. I will open a portal that will take you into the past. You must go back. This... this is real, isn't it? I've even toyed with the idea of creating a portal between two points in time. With Brawl's help. But that's odd. My letter makes no mention of what caused the disaster. I suppose I was in a hurry. So tell me, what's going to happen to us? That's exactly what I saw when I first discovered this place, several years ago. It seems whatever happened then is going to happen again. I think it has something to do with the Dwarves' lore. This is bad. This is very, very bad. Yes, you see, the Dwarves who built this place left inscriptions. Brawl hasn't been able to fully translate them, but we understand some parts. This warning keeps coming up. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. 
We think that breaking the law here will cause some kind of event. The truth is, I've used the Dwarves' law to frighten my people into obedience, and it's worked so far. But someone's about to break that law. Let me think. Hmm. Your arrival here is exactly what I need. You've helped me a great deal by bringing this note to my attention. I wonder if you could do me another favor. I need you to investigate the city, talk to my people, help them, if it'll win their trust. You can even go through their possessions, if you have to. You must work out who is going to break the Dwarves' law. Once you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. As Jarl, I authorize you to go anywhere you need to go, including private homes. But if someone asks you to leave, you should do so immediately. I can't promise either of those things, but I will certainly do everything within my power to help you once you've helped my people. And of course, if you decide to stay, I would make sure you enjoy a comfortable life here. Now what do you say? Will you help me? Thank you. Now, you mustn't tell anybody where you're from or what may be about to happen here. People do foolish things when they panic. If it helps you, you're welcome to borrow the book on my desk. It contains the names and addresses of my subjects. Just don't show it to anyone. Goodbye for now, and good luck. I don't need to tell you what will happen if you fail. I'm a Breton from Hyrak. I've studied history at the Imperial City, which led me to Skyrim in search of Grimoire ruins. And now I'm here. Some days I just can't believe my luck. Working with Grohl. Researching the richest source of Grimoire history and technology I could have imagined. I feel like we're on the brink of some amazing discoveries about the Grimoire. Who knows? 
Maybe we'll find not all of them have disappeared. I could, but Grohl knows much more than I do. You should be able to find him in his chambers down the city. A way out of here? Are you kidding? Why would I want to get out of here? I can't think of a single place in all time real I'd rather be. Now that you mentioned it, I do. I need you to get something for me, and it won't be easy. I've tried everything I can think of, and still nothing. There's a big Nord living down in the city called Rikus. You may have seen him walking around in an immaculate example of dragon armor. I need that armor. It's the only one like it, and I believe it to be crucial in unlocking the secret of this place. The trouble is, before I could get a good look at it, that brute Rikas claimed it as his own, and has been wearing it ever since. I tried everything. Appeals to his better nature, flattery, charm, even threats. It's like negotiating with a brick wall. The only thing I haven't tried is violence, and you know how that would end. But I'm convinced there's a way to get it. There has to be. Thank you. If you do manage to get it, you're welcome to keep it. I just need to have a quick look at it, that's all. Oh, that's fine. I've got a lot of reading to do if I'm going to have much of the day. There's a looter coming into the city. I saw a man come down the shaft, but he was armed and he looked like a looter. If he makes it into the city and starts attacking people, he'll break the dwarves' law, and who knows what will happen. You have to stop him. Is it over? Is it safe? Oh, thank the gods. What a relief. We're so lucky that you arrived in time to stop them. I'll be sure to tell everyone what you've done for us. Thank you so much. If there's ever anything my husband Tabik and I can do to help you, just ask. Oh, there's not much to tell. My husband, Tabik, runs the clothing store in town. You should stop by. I'm sure you'll leave looking much better. 
N not that you don't look good now, I mean, it's just, you know, nice clothes are... Oh, who am I kidding? I'm no good at selling anything. I guess that's why they've got me sweeping the floors, day in, day out. Well, that, and we weren't invited to be layabouts in the Jarl's Citadel. Did you see anyone working in the Citadel? I'll bet you didn't. They just amuse themselves all day, while those of us down here do all the work. And why? Because Abik's a Redguard, and I'm a Breton. I bet if we were both Imperial, it'd be a different story. The worst part is we left Solitude to get away from bigoted Nords after our son died. But here, the Imperials are even worse. Of course. No offense, but I'd rather not talk about it. Too many painful memories. And besides, there are enough sad stories around this place as it is. But if you're interested, you can talk to my husband, Habik, in his shop, Firefly Finery. All right. If I did, Habik and I probably wouldn't be here. But Ulrin's wife managed to escape a while back. He doesn't like to talk about it, but you might be able to get him to open up, I suppose. Nice to talk to you. See you soon. someone to mind the store. So I volunteered. Doesn't make any money, of course. Not enough customers. The Jarl says he likes to keep us busy and out of trouble. But of course, he and all his cronies in the Citadel never seem to lift a finger. Our son was working at my stables outside the city. He was alone when he had a visit from some Imperial, a cousin of the High King. This Imperial thought he'd just take one of the horses as a tithe. Guess he didn't think a 12-year-old boy was going to stop him. But Limar wouldn't stand for it. And as the thief rode off, my son managed to shoot an arrow into his shoulder. But I... I wasn't there at the time. I came back from the market to find my son's body, trampled in the dirt. It was... I... I can't begin to describe it. I was shattered. I went straight to Torig's court and demanded justice. But I guess that word doesn't mean much to an Imperial. Instead, he seized my stables, and told me if I ever set foot in solitude again, my wife and I would end up the same way as Lamar. So we left. Wandered Skyrim for a while, and eventually wound up here. I was hoping this place would be better. I was wrong. I wish it was that simple. But with the Dwarves' Law, everybody here is terrified of doing anything wrong, in case it gets us all killed. The Dwarves wrote, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. But we don't know what they meant by sin. Theft. Violence, probably. But maybe they meant all sorts of things, like dishonesty or disobedience to the Jarl. That's what Metellus would like us to think, anyway. So I could ignore his orders. Sure, I could even lead an uprising against him. 
Gods know most of us are sick of him, but I'd be risking the lives of everyone here, and I just don't want to be responsible for that. So here I am, running my shop. Could be worse. All right. No, I don't. But I'd wager that if anyone does know a way out, it's the Jarl. But of course, if he told anyone he'd be ruling over an empty city. All right, thanks for stopping by. Hello, my friend. of you to take an interest in my life, dear, but you don't need to humor an old woman. Really? Well, you're the first person in the city to say that. Well, let's see. These days I mostly just sweep the streets here, keep them clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness, or so they say. It's not very inspiring, as you can imagine, but the alternative is to wind up like poor Dooley. Oh, you haven't met him yet. Don't worry, I'm sure he'll introduce himself to you sooner or later. He's homeless. He lives in a cave by the lake. I feel sorry for him. I think most of us do. But ever since his brother died, he's... He's been obsessing over some long-lost treasure. The Jarl decided because he can't work, he doesn't deserve to live in a house like the rest of us. So he lives in a tent in a cave of sorts. But don't let him drag you into it. I'm quite sure it's imaginary. A great loss can do terrible things to a person's mind. Well, anyway, that's about all there is about me to tell, I'm afraid. I'm not very interesting. Oh, well, goodbye. 